This week on the Ritual Misery podcast, was the pandemic virtual or real? Man, I'm going to have to phone that in. On a VR device? Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery podcast, episode 285 for Sunday, the 16th of May, 2021. This is a show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos, that's Kent, no guest this week, and Kent talked over the intro track, and I think I like it that way. <laughs> that works for me. How you doing, brother? Man, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm doing good. It's been, uh, it's been busy. Very, very busy. And I, did you, did you leave your house today? Uh, no, I went outside. I, I spent about two hours in the yard doing yard work. Um, oh, that's about it. Oh, yeah. Um, don't go outside. Don't, don't, don't like leave the house. Don't leave the house. Okay. The CDC came out apparently this week and released a, a statement saying it's fucking party time. Everybody go out and wander around mm. coughing and sneezing all over each other like bitches. Mm, mm, mm-hmm. At least that's, that's the interpretation well, of a lot of people here in Alaska. Right, 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 right. Well, I mean, at least I've been vaccinated and my household's been vaccinated. Yeah, same. I mean, that's a uh, it's a silver lining. Um, but um, yeah, yeah, man. Uh, now that I'm back at work full time, no more, no more teleworking. Like I'm ready. I'm I'm done. I am way past being over the pandemic. Like let's let's like kill it. Let's kill this goddamn virus. Like, yeah. Why are we like? Um, the virus is still a thing. Let's, um, you know what would be really cool? Let's spread it more yeah. because it was starting to go away. Let's, so, um, did you, you hear the latest Q conspiracy? Oh God, no. Oh, this no, is beautiful. This is fucking beautiful. QAnon is now suggesting that, this, that since the CDC is letting vaccinated people wander around without a mask in all situations, mm-hmm. um, QAnon is saying that non-vaccinated people, the people that are, uh, that aren't going to get vaccinated, the anti-vaxxers, mm-hmm. should wear face coverings anytime they're in public to avoid ingesting the the bio, bi- biological uh, robots or whatever that the vaccinated people are huh. emitting. Oh, I'm down. Like, yeah. I'm going to retweet this one. Like, <laughs> hell yeah. I think that is a, a great message. That is a great message to spread. Yeah, no, I, I'm like I'm yeah. not. I'm not even gonna refute it. Like I'm down. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sounds legit. Yeah, like oh, it, the, this shit's finally working out for us. Like uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you want to go down that QAnon conspiracy hole? Like by all means, this is the time I, right now. Listen to this one. Dude, yeah, I I never <laughs> thought I would hear a QAnon message that I agreed with. This one. Spot on. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was beautiful. Fucking beautiful. Um, hey, dude, we both picked up some gear since we last talked. Yeah, man, I went to Best Buy about sorry uh, that that was a mistake. week and a half ago. You should have known better. <laughs> <gasps> I should have. I hadn't been in a Best Buy in I don't even know how many years. Probably <laughs> somewhere between five and ten. Yeah. Now he- here's the key, though. You went into Best Buy after having not been in for you know several years, yeah. and you went in unsupervised. That's right. Yes, that was the biggest mistake right there. Yeah. Is I went alone and without an agenda. I walked in without a list. <laughs> I just walked in. You you and... walked in with a wallet and no idea what to spend the money on. <gasps> yeah, I I wasn't <laughs> expecting nor wishing to buy anything. But I were I walked out with over five hundred dollars worth of shit, uh, including an Oculus Quest Two, yeah, uh, impulse purchase uh, on on a VR headset, yeah. Um, buyer's remorse yet? A week yet? and a half. Hmm? Buyer's remorse oh, yet? Oh, buyer's no, 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 no. A week and a half later, I have no regrets. <laughs> VR is next level shit. <laughs> It is exactly what I imagined it could be, mm-hmm. um, probably even more so. Um, I'd played around with a little bit of VR stuff on a Samsung phone. Mm-hmm. Um, not the same. Not the same. Not the same. No. No. Um, and it's the, a, it's the Oculus, Oculus Quest 2, right? Yes. Yeah, so it's so completely, is... completely wireless. You don't connect it to anything. It is its own self-contained device. Uh, well, you kind of need to be on Wi-Fi, but that's about it. Um, 
yeah, it's it is it, it's it's amazing. I can I sometimes will go in and put the headset on and turn it on and just sit in the lobby <laughs> for a couple of minutes <laughs> just to get my fix of crack. <laughs> it is um it it is quite insane. Uh, so two questions. Yeah. One, have you played Beat Saber yet? I have played the demo for it and it is ridiculously fun. Uh, but you haven't paid for it yet. Not yet. Okay. Not yet. But it's coming. It's yeah, I, th- it's inevitable. I am in. I am gonna end up paying for All it. All right. Uh, next question. What's VR porn like? <laughs> um, well, hypothetically, um, <laughs> it's next level shit. <laughs> I, hypothetically speaking. Right, right, right. But what I can tell you is the game Vader Immortal, you get to go face-to-face with Darth Vader. Mm-hmm. Well, I say face-to-face. It's more like face-to-shoulder. to, to like shoulder. Um, The guy is enormous and intimidating and fucking scary as shit. And it feels real as hell mm. in the Oculus. It's, it, is, it, is, it, is, it, it is out of this world, dude. And how long does um, the battery last? Um, honestly, I don't know. I've been in virtual reality with this thing for like an hour and a half straight, which they don't recommend. They recommend like thirty minutes at a time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I've been, I've, I've been in it for like an hour and a half, maybe even two hours at a time, and it's still, it's still got battery. It's probably like a you know quarter charge or something at that point. Okay. Uh, if you start from a full charge. Um. I so w- when I first started playing it in like the first couple of days and playing games where uh, you know people are shooting at me and I have to dodge and get out of the way, it scared the fuck out of me and I almost hurt myself. <laughs> I uh, I was I, w- I was being shot at by some some pirates some space pirates in a Star Wars game. And um, as you do, I, yeah. I jumped out of the way. I wasn't expecting to be fired upon, and I literally physically jumped out of the way and landed in a pile of cardboard boxes. Thank God it was cardboard boxes and not the shelf that was right next to it. But, um, but, but did you survive in the game? I did, actually. Okay. I did. Because my guy jumped behind virtual boxes, <laughs> which is what I was intending to do. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. So my guy was fine. I had a little bit of a scraped elbow and like a bruise on my back, but uh, I was okay otherwise. Um, I'm getting used to it now. I'm, I'm figuring out that okay, all right. When I'm in game, I can use the little joystick on the on the left hand controller to move my guy. I don't have to like you know physically strafe. I'm getting used to that, which thank God, because I bought the Walking Dead game, and I almost shit myself with these goddamn zombies coming at you when they fucking grab at you dude i almost fucking broke out the uh the lights on my on my ceiling fan because i fucking freaked out so bad and i threw my hand up and the controller smashed into to the uh i don't even know what you call it the thing that surrounds the bulb like yeah. the glass like casing or whatever yeah and um, oh boy, if I'd have been like an inch or two to to one side or the other, I would have had just shattered glass rain down on me. That shit, dude. Horror games in VR, again, next level shit. <laughs> oh man, insane. that's awesome. That is awesome. <clears throat> have, have you have you played it in virtual reality at all? Uh. I have about the same level of virtual virtual reality experience as you did prior to purchasing the Quest 2. Got it. Okay. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Recommend. It yeah. it is it has my highest rec. The only downside that that I really see about this device is well, Oculus is owned by Facebook. Yeah. In so you order have to have a to, Facebook account. Yes, you have to log into Facebook to Activate it basically to yep. to uh, to make purchases to do any of that shit. You got to do it through your Facebook account. That is that's the downside. The hardware is pretty badass. The only the only critique that I have on the hardware is I wish that you could could tweak the um, 
like zero in on on the focus, like the visual focus. Mm -hmm. I wish there was either a like an in soft like an in in world like software solution for that, or a physical like dial on the outside of the headset, like a diopter to zero. Yes, exactly like yeah. that. Uh, but right now, the only way to really dial it in is to have the headset off and adjust it and then put it back on, check if it's right, take it off, fix it again, throw it back on, mm. you know, that kind of shit. And, and, and also, like, if you if you have the – like, if the, the headset's riding a little high, mm -hmm. um, you, might, you might see just fine or whatever. But if you adjust it and it's riding a little bit low, now you're out of focus. So you either got to adjust the headset, like, physically on your head. Yeah. Or take it off and do an adjustment. It's just a pain in the ass. That is the hardware-wise. That is the only complaint I have. And then uh, back in the fact that it's Facebook and you have to be on Facebook. That's yeah. that's uh, that's <clears throat> that's it. everything else so far has been fantastic on it. <sighs> well, man, I have purchased uh, two Apple items this year that I did not intend to purchase. Both of which are categories of items that I planned on purchasing. I yes, got my yeah. MacBook Pro that I didn't want but needed at the time and will and i'm very impressed by it I'm, there's no buyer's remorse there and uh it, it may preclude me getting the imac pro when that comes out like in in september or, or whatever you know right um maybe maybe not we'll see we'll see uh the other thing is i ended up upgrading to an iphone 12 pro max oh okay yeah, we're switching carriers. We're moving from Verizon because my wife doesn't get good good signal with Verizon, and we're going to T-Mobile because that's okay. like the one that gets good service where she is down there. Um, and we did all of our trade ins, everything else. So it basically cost me two hundred dollars for the iPhone 12 Pro Max, but now I'm on contract again for the first time in like seven years, which I'm not not happy about. Oh wow! <laughs> but. Mm -hmm. Like I have, I just haven't been doing. You know, I've been paying for them all out of pocket. You know, just paying for them myself. Um, I've had it for about four days. Mm -hmm. Battery life is been off and on, but I don't want to judge battery life until I've had it for about a month because that's that's when the battery's really kicked in and kind of warmed up, and you've, you know, you've really used it. Mm -hmm. uh, like yesterday, I, I didn't have to charge it at all, and it was like sixty eight percent when I went to bed. And today I've been on it a little bit more, and it's at fifty-one percent, and I've still got another couple hours for bed. So overall, nothing. Wow, bad. no, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, the screen is com is is ridiculous, like absolutely ridiculous. This thing is beautiful. Uh, I've taken a few pictures with it. it seems pretty pretty okay. Like uh, it, uh, I mean, I have a an R five. Like I'm not I'm not buying a camera when I buy my phone. Oh sure 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 sure, you know. but but compared to an iPhone 10, uh, just a just a snapshot, pull it out of your pocket, take a snapshot. What how uh, how different are we are we talking? Uh, I haven't done side by sides myself, but uh, just off the cuff, it's it's an mm. improvement. Like it's a noticeable improvement. And then you you also get that zoom. You know the the zoom lens and the wide angle lens. I think is better than than the mm -hmm. uh, the iPhone 10. Um, it's it's a it's a marked improvement. Like it, you would be happy with the improvement if that's all the pictures you take, you would notice it. Um, but right. it, it's not replacing well, my my mirrorless camera anytime. Have so. you have you played with any of the AR capabilities on it? I have not. I have not had it long enough and been had had free time to get in there. I did play with the iPhone 10 AR stuff and it never impressed me. Um, mm -hmm. The only thing I've ever used AR for in the on the iPhone 10 is taking rough measurements of walls. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Other, uh, outside of like Pokemon Go and bullshit like that, yeah, like actual utility, <clears throat> I've yes, I've taken measurements with of like wall, like m rough measurement of a you know the height of a wall or something mm -hmm. like that, and um, I I played with a uh, some sort of a shopping app that uh, will place furniture in your room, mm. um, and like automatically scale it to yeah. um, you know to the to the room size and whatnot. Um, and those were fine on the the 10, but uh, apparently, like the 12 Pro has like some kind of next level AR shit. So I'm interested in I, that if you ever play with it. I, I will say that the focusing is uh, with the lidar. The focusing is amazingly fast. Like it's it's nice. freaking dead on really quickly. Because uh, I know the 10 sometimes you can look at it and be like, is that is that focus? Yeah, I guess that's focused. 
you know, <laughs> but with this, it's, it's like, no, that's, that's pin sharp focused, right, right in their eyeballs. Um, so, uh, more, more to come on that, but, uh, that definitely precludes me from getting the iPhone 13 or the 12 S or whatever they do mm -hmm. this, this fall. Um, mm -hmm. but I'm not, I, I, again, like I didn't get the 12 originally because it wasn't a major upgrade, but for $200, it's worth it. Yeah. $200. I mean, yeah, I'd probably do that too for 200 bucks. Yeah. And I didn't, I didn't get the upgraded storage. So I did have some storage manipulation to do because I went from a 256 to a 128. Uh, mm -hmm. But mostly that was just offloading pictures to to iCloud, and it, mm -hmm. it I got rid of a few apps that I hadn't used in you know forever. So mm -hmm. and there is a way to see last time you checked your like last time you opened an app, which is something I've been begging for for years. But yep. you can't sort it that way. You just have to scroll through and find the ones that you haven't used since 2019 or later, and then you just delete them, sons of bitches, because it's been over a year and you haven't used it. Yep. Same way I feel about clothes. So, um, yeah, that's uh, that's that's where I'm at with that. Uh, but again, like, like, like I said before the show, uh, as soon as you found out I had this, you were, you'd been like, yeah, well, th that's definitely what you're going to talk about, even though it's <laughs> like, I didn't even think about it until I picked it up to move it before the show started. <laughs> right. Um, I ended up picking up the tech 21 case without the case. It, it's beautiful. It just feels fragile. It's things heavy as fuck though. Like this thing mm. might as well be made of gold. It is heavy. It is not a light phone at all. Um, but it's it's pretty, and the screen is amazing. Like if I tried really hard on the iPhone ten, I could see the pixels. I can't see the pixels on here. <clears throat> I don't know if it's higher right. pixel density, or if on it's ten. You can see the pixels. Yeah, if you try really hard, you can see. Well, I shouldn't say the pixels. You can see the. Uh, the um the oh what what the hell do they call it is it <laughs> in, into aliasing you can see the aliasing in the iPhone 10 if you look at okay you know okay. At, at characters and stuff like that you can kind of see it i can't see it at all in here it's like this there's gotcha. no way and this is okay. this is way brighter it's only it's only 20 percent brighter or whatever but yeah it's absolutely brighter mm -hmm. So it, you know, yeah, and that to me, <clears throat> like it, it's good to know that, but it's probably not something I would take advantage of because my phone spends most of the time on like twenty percent brightness. Like if I'm indoors, right. if I'm outdoors, of course, like it matters, but yeah. like indoors, like it's like yeah, twenty or less, I would say. Yeah, well, my thing is like those times we've been at South by and we're wandering around, and you kind of got to like lean into the shadow a little bit to be able to see your phone and text or look at the map or whatever. That's fair. Yeah, you yep. know, like it, I never run at full brightness either, but when I do run at full brightness, I need full brightness. Like, give <laughs> right, me all right, the right. brights. You're talking about going outside and doing things. Like, what even is that anymore? Well, <laughs> uh, like look, just... if Q takes hold, man, we can actually do <laughs> shit like that and not worry about it. <laughs> i'm down i'm totally oh, down shit. all right man hey man you want to play a game yeah let's do what it what time is it Ken? he's all powerful he's extraordinary a genius game i cannot contain myself Ken's game presented by stephen cogswell <laughs> this week's game is called r be this here real <laughs> Oh boy! Uh, so we're, we're gonna we're gonna talk about pirates. Uh, I went to a pirate speak translator to ask it how would a pirate say, "Is this real?" And that's what it told me. Be this here real. Uh, so I'm going to name ten pirates, and you're gonna tell me if they are a real pirate that actually lived. Okay. The uh, the ones that are not real are taken from works of fiction. Seems so fair. It, yeah, and unless you're a pirate expert, I can see this game being difficult because a lot of pirates are uh, adapted, like a, like a, the fictional pirates that we know, a lot of them are adapted from real pirates. So whenever there's a case like that, if I say, is this pirate real, you know it from fiction, but it could be based on a real character or a real person, that that would be a yes answer. That would be a real pirate. Gotcha. Cool. All right, here we go. Now, I will Our warn person. you. Now, what, what do you think I'm going to get on this? What what, what, do you, what grade do you think I'm going to get? Ooh. Uh, mm, hmm. I think you're going to get the D. I yeah? Think you're gonna get the D. 
Yep. Okay. Uh, the fact that I've played Sid Meier's Pirates for like two years straight, mm. and most of those famous pirates are, ma- are are based off of real pirates, does that skew upward or downward because I'm overly confident? Mm, that's a good question. I I feel like like you're anticipating on beating the D. Well, probably. <laughs> All right. Well, let's see. Can <laughs> Amos get the D? We shall see. <laughs> All right, Amos. Your first pirate is Blackbeard. That's real. Blackbeard straight up is is a real pirate. Yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, that that and that is the that's probably the number one most fictionalized pirate. There's yeah. like. Barely a piece of pirate fiction that that doesn't either have Blackbeard as a character or reference him in some way. Uh, and Blackbeard was part of a AFN commercial. Oh, God, at least one. <laughs> I mean, like the the story of Blackbeard is an AFN thing. Ah, uh, is is one of you know they tell stories that of fiction that re, or whatever or history that related to the current service. It'd be like it'd start out with Blackbeard and then turn into the Coast Guard or some shit. Right, right. Which, well, yeah. Coasties or, can't watch AFN, so fuck them. We sometimes do a Friday trivia at work. Yeah. And uh, you can tell the people that have been overseas because we get all of the questions right about, like, which constitutional amendment or state capitals or things like that. Yep. <laughs> yep. All right, Amos, your second pirate is Long John Silver. Long John Silver. I'm going to say fake. You are correct. All right. That was tough. This is one of those that I thought was based on a real person. Yeah. Uh, he was not. I, I just, I just, uh, maybe I'm, I don't know. I don't like, I don't like their fish. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Captain James Hook. Captain, Captain James Hook. Hook. He's yeah. real. Is he? Not according to real life history. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fuck him. Um. Yeah. All right. Your next one is Calico Jack. Seems real. Seems real. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. He's real. Uh. What about Davy Jones? Davy Jones is real. Hmm. Another AFN commercial reference. Be sent to Davy Jones Locker. Yep. Um, I could not find any reference to him being a real person. Ah, uh, see, he wasn't best, a captain though. Anyway, go ahead. The, the, the best thing that I that I found was the uh, the legend of this demon named Davy Jones that would like steal your soul if you died at sea or something like that. Mm. Um, and the source that I was reading, which I can't even remember what page that was. Um, did not know the origins of the legend, but it's like I guess like a thousand years old or something. That makes sense. Okay. Makes sense. The next pirate is Black Bart. Um, <clears throat> I, I I I might have something to fight the last one for Davy Jones. Black Bart. Black Bart was real. Yes. Okay. Black Bart is real. Black Bart is or a was. some bitch in Sid Meier's Pirates, by the way. <laughs> right. I mean, I mean, so is Blackbeard, but he's like end level. So by the time you, unless unless you've been through a couple cycles, a couple retirements, you're not like a couple generations, you're not going to really see Blackbeard. But once you see him, you run the hell away until you've got a good fleet and you've got a good uh, mastery of the wind. Mastery of the wind. Yeah. Arr. It affects different ships different ways. Like you got to know how your ships are going <laughs> to react to the wind when you sail against it and try to launch cannonballs and fucking grape shot out of his ass. <laughs> like it's rough, man. Uh, it's rough as the seas. Okay. Um, your next pirate is Billy Bones. That sounds like some bullshit. Sounds like bullshit. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, he is a fictional pirate. Yeah, because he's bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what about Jack Sparrow? Jack Sparrow's fake as fuck. Yes, 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 yes. All right, uh, <laughs> tell me about Red Legs Breeves. There you go. 
Uh, give me, give me just a second. Okay. This is exciting. Greatest moments in parenting. <laughs> yeah. We all good? Yeah. Okay. God damn it. <laughs> all right. So we, we can cut out like a, a minute here. Well, why okay. would we do that, uh, though? <clears throat> so that little routine I ran when I started, when I turned to tell it to turn, turn on studio, one of the things it was supposed to do was put this particular echo into do not disturb mode. And it did not. And I didn't catch it. That's how that started. So a little flashback to the people that heard that part. Um, hope it was worth the payoff because it sure wasn't for me. Uh, all right. You said red legged, red legged Robin something, the Dutch, right? Red, red legs grieves. Red legs grieve. Sound that sounds real. Sounds legit. Sounds real. Mm -hmm. Well, good because he was a real guy. All right, and your next one is Captain Flint. I've no, I've never heard that in my life. <laughs> Which okay probably means it's real, but I'm gonna go fake. <laughs> You're gonna go fake. Okay. So the fact that you don't know Captain Flint tells me that you never read Treasure Island. No. Or, um. Or it, pretty much anything by Robert Louis Stevenson. No. Or, uh, or you haven't seen Black Sails. I'll, I'll get to that later. <laughs> um, Amos, well, as a bonus, what about Captain Morgan? Captain Morgan. Well, let me tell you a little something about Captain Morgan. Captain Morgan is a character on a famous podcast. <laughs> the visits semi regularly who sells rum, good rum, my favorite rum. Um however, not based on a historical figure, and I can say that confidently because he's in the present. Ah, okay. Okay. Um well uh, take that wasabi powder and sniff it. Yeah, so luckily I don't have to uh, determine uh, if that was a correct or incorrect answer because it was a bonus. Uh, but Sir Henry Morgan uh, was a real person. Yes. Uh, the 18th century, I think. That'd be a bit far back, but okay. And you just glitched out sure. because. Or 17. Um, but luckily, you didn't need the bonus point anyway. No one, no one heard what you just said. That D. No one, no one, no one heard what you just said because you glitched out. But I beat the D, so that's all that matters. Yeah, you beat the D. That is all that matters, dude. You beat the D. <laughs> Congratulations, you got eight out of ten. <laughs> Bob, tell him what they've done. There we go. All right. Um, hey, dude, this week's uh, that, that was going great until I got a fucking call on the intercom, and then that just went to shit. And then holy cow, uh, we we what was today? What was what was this? Well, what was last week's topic? Um, last week's topic was uh, Amos and Kent taking a break. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot uh, about that. Uh, but this week's topic: pandemic viewing. Yes, uh, I'm interested to hear what uh, what our audience has has watched. We got a few people in the chat room, um, but we're going to go over ours, and then hopefully they'll have kicked in a few thoughts uh, along the way. Um, all right, I'm going to let's start with worst, okay. and I'm going to start with your worst because it seems the most defamatory, and I want to talk about it. Okay, um, so. There was a lot of bad TV, I'm sure, that I watched uh, during the course of the pandemic, uh, but I don't remember most of it because I probably stopped watching it uh, before finishing 
a movie or finishing a, a you know a, a full episode of a show or whatever, or it was just forgettable, which is probably worse than being a bad movie if it's just completely forgettable. The worst thing that I remember watching during the pandemic was Wonder Woman eighty four. Okay, please elaborate. Oh God, um, part of. <laughs> Did you watch it first, by the way? Yes. Yes, I watched it uh, a couple days after it came out, actually, because we were going to record a let's not talk about Star uh, not let's not talk about Thrones about it, and that mm-hmm. just never happened. Right, right. Um, part of it, I think, was was expectations. I expected it to be, uh, you know, as good as the first movie, uh, which was probably partially my fault, uh, but. I found Wonder Woman 84 very, very problematic on a lot of different levels. The uh, So when you're watching a superhero movie, you have to you have to really, like, kick your suspension of disbelief into gear, right? Mm-hmm. Like, uh, you have to believe that people can have superpowers and, and things like that, which, duh, of course, right? So you, you're accepting that superpowers exist, and mm-hmm. you're accepting certain things, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but certain leaks, uh, leaps in logic... Uh, are just like I can't get pat like I can't just accept that that's just okay cool um, especially when it disputes itself like during the movie uh, when when it's not consistent with its own universe uh, that's where it gets fucking weird for me and not great um, but not only that the the whole <sighs> fucking what's his nuts the fucking dude the dude that the Chris Pine character. I can't think of his fucking name right now. Uh, my biggest flaw with the first Wonder Woman movie was that for gr- a great deal of that movie, it felt like it was a Chris Pine movie. Mm-hmm. And it's not supposed to be. He's supposed to be a supporting character mm-hmm. to the Gal Gadot movie. Right. And But a lot of the first movie... It felt like it was a Chris Pine movie, and and I, and I think I want to comment on that real quick. I think that was because Gal Gadot was a was not a known yes, uh, sure. a property. I say property, but you know her work wasn't established uh, no, enough yeah. to be able to carry the whole movie right. by herself. So they, they sure. backfilled in case, and and that's fine, and, and whatever. It was still a good movie. Like, an I, entity. I have... There you go. A known entity. There we go. Thank you, Chris LaRock. <laughs> oh. Um, and it. Which was fine. Okay, now she is a known entity. Right. An established person with an established character. And, an and, established she, made, and she made universe. Chris Pine look like a... F- like, like, why is he here in this movie? <laughs> yes. Like, why? first of all, why did you... Why the fuck did you write him back in to the universe after you killed him in the first one? <sighs> and then you once again made it a Chris Pine movie for a lot of it. And then it's not even the fucking Chris Pine character. It's like this other fucking... It's like a, it's, it's, and it gets really problematic with the rapey stuff. Like she's raping her neighbor or some random guy. I can't even remember now. Just raping some random guy that has this like, this like magical sheen to look like Chris Pine. And what the fuck? Like the the, the movie just has so many fucking problems. I can't even, Yeah. I, I just can't. I, I will summarize the two biggest things that I didn't like about it, and if you think about them, they will everything else wrong with that movie will fall under one of those two uh, those two things if you think of them as categories. Okay. Okay. First category: date rape. Yep. So you can you can take the the. I wouldn't even call it date rape. No, I would just call it more like just just rape. Yeah. Well, it's. it's it's just I, I heard it it was written somewhere where it's like a it's a uh a, a delusional it's ah shit it's a schizophrenic delusional fantastic it's something like that but it ends up being rape so i i just say yeah. the date rape because it's not like her neighbor didn't wasn't interested he's just getting it without his conscious effort and without her oh it's like um yeah somebody's like passed out drunk and you take advantage right like it's more like that than like the than the like alley mugging right uh, violent right yeah um okay so date rape and f4 
<laughs> okay. Yeah. So so you take you take the problematic uh anti misogynist view on that whole relationship that she carried out in her head and then you add in the factual inaccuracies yeah. of the F four flying to you know, wherever the fuck it flew to without air support, prior coordination, you know, maintenance crews, because God God forbid the F four go anywhere without a fucking maintenance crew hanging on its ass. Um, like you take those two things and you can basically take everything else in the movie that I didn't like and, and couldn't stand about it and wrap it under one of those two things, factual inaccuracies and date rapey shit. Yeah. 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 It's, uh, it was just bad, which is bad because if you take out at least some, if you take out the most pressing parts of both of those, if you take out the date rapey stuff and maybe make it towards just an illusion in her head and she doesn't believe that he's actually there taking it, that someone else has taken over, you know, the Chris Pine has taken over this dude's body and mind and as acting as him and things like that. If you take that aspect out of it and just have it a delusion in her head that the other dude is fully conscious of, you know, that, you, you know, like the, you could reform that to where it's not, or, it's, it's or not just make bad. it like it, not a real person. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like, like the ghost of Chris Pine. Right, where like she, she's, she's just imagining. she's just handling herself in the bedroom and not raping her neighbor. Yes, no, exactly. Something there, right, there, you could do the something else. Completely out of it. Yeah, just make it emotional and not sexual. Like that's oh, that fine. I mean that'd be a leap though. This is Hollywood we're talking about. They got to capitalize on Gal Gadot. So do that and then take out the F four and just make it to where they hop on a fucking plane because it's like you know the early eighties and nobody checked IDs and shit. You're fine. It's a good movie. I like it. There's so many ways that they could have just just tweaked things a little yeah. bit. Yeah, it, it's like they had a really good movie and they decided, hey, how can we stir some shit in here and have some some peanut chunks just pop up to the top? Yeah, this is this this movie's too good. Um, can somebody can somebody make this worse for can like oh that's that sounds really stupid. Yeah, throw it in, add it yeah. in. That sounds that that that'll that'll yeah. make it just put, dumb put that on page forty three. Uh, 43. No, I don't care. Just put it on page 43. I will give it credit though. The entire flashback scene to the, to the Island. All yes. of that was that, amazing. It was all yeah, CGI. Was, None of it was believable and it was fucking amazing. Yeah. No, that was cool. I would have gone was, to see that, that movie. Consistent. Yeah. That was consistent with the universe. Yeah. And, and, give me yeah, that I movie. Was, I was good with that. Yeah. All right. What did you have, man? What What was um, if, if Wonder Woman '84 wasn't the worst thing you watched during the pandemic? What was it? I'm only going to top it by something you didn't watch: fucking Tiger King. <laughs> oh my god, I could not finish that show. I tried. It's only like eight episodes, and I watched like four of them. And finally, yeah. and I don't don't remember. I I I like had a little unconscious episode where my brain just shut itself off and turned it back, itself back on. <laughs> <laughs> something happened. Somebody said something or whatever, and my brain, like, I got, I went from this is stupid to actually angry. I was watching that show. <laughs> I mean, we're talking about a dude that spends hours watching YouTube, hoping to learn something from somewhere at all. I yeah. mean, like, at any given time. And my brain clicked and said, no, this is too fucking stupid for you to continue watching you're wasting every breath you take in this room watching this show leave now you piece of tv watching shit yeah. so that's i assumed like from the 20 seconds of the trailer that i fucking watched i assumed that it would be that for me so mm. i avoided it um unfortunately over the summer of 2020 i probably consumed 38 hours of podcast content of people talking about that stupid fucking shit. <laughs> yeah. So I feel like I experienced Tiger King and yes, I am. I am not glad to have had that in my life. I, anyway, I didn't go in watching it. I went in to spend time with my wife. I actually went in to yeah. give her a foot rub. I know I uh, get maybe a little too personal here. Went in to give her a foot rub. She was watching that show. She was at like 10 minutes in on the first episode and then I just hung out because I wanted to spend some time with my wife watching TV. Yep. That's how I end up watching baking shows. Yeah, and that that just turned into me just being a fucking rage monster and having to leave <laughs> at about the four episode mark. I just couldn't fucking do it anymore. Oh dear God! It, it was it was literally the worst. 
Yeah. All right. Uh, now let's go to uh, let's go to uh, honorable mentions, and we're, we'll start with you again. So, your uh, honorable mention. This is the thing that if the other one didn't exist, this would have been your top view, top experience. Yeah. So, well, and the interesting thing is this, none of this came out during the pandemic. This is, this is like a legacy television show that I discovered. I knew that it existed when it, when it first came out on stars, mm -hmm. like pr shit, probably if not 10 years ago, close to 10 years ago. Um, and it was something I was very interested in and I wanted to watch it, but just never did. And I just started watching it. I'm not even all the way through season one and I just started watching it. Uh, a couple months ago, probably. Okay. But I'm in love with it. Black Sails. So this is why I had pirates on my mind, uh, because B Black Sails is kind of it basically is a prequel to Treasure Island. And it's a like it's an adult oriented series on Stars mm -hmm. or was, uh, and it is fucking amazing. Think Game of Thrones, but on the high seas. Gotcha. Okay. It is fantastic. Really, really good. Speaking of Game of Thrones, we still don't have a, the fucking book. I'm I'm officially calling it because I had said that he would release the next book right after the series ended on HBO. I'm, yep. I'm officially saying that I was wrong on that. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's uh. Yep. Did, we, did we bet a lunch or anything on that? I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't remember what your wager was either. So because you had <laughs> you, you you either had it's going to be way after or it's going to be. Um, or it'll come out before the series ends. And I don't remember which one it was, but it doesn't fucking matter because there's only one possibility now, and I'll probably end up buying you lunch anyway, so fuck it. Like, it was, I, was, I was wrong. That's all I remember. Right. Okay, <sighs> what, what, what did you have for, uh, for an honorable mention? My honorable mention was Mitchell's versus the Machines. This is a Amazon flick that just came out not too long ago. Okay. And it's a cartoon. It's a family movie. Um, I don't know if I've told you about it before, but there's like four different art styles depending on the mood, like different art styles. Mm. It'd be like uh, if the guy that draws, you know, if, if Charles, Sch uh, yeah, Charles Schultz and mm -hmm. um, Todd McFarlane got together and individually wrote scenes for a movie. Okay, you know, like it's com it's disparate changes in art style and it, it changes with the with the with the emotion of the movie so during angry times it's more of a almost like a uh shit i can't even think of something but you they visually represent the emotion on the screen according to the art style used it's fantastic it's a great story it's it's hilarious i mean i was laughing my i, tr I was trying to do something else autumn was watching it in my room and i ended up putting my computer down to watch the movie because it was fucking funny and this is on what? What is this on? I think it's on Amazon Prime. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm definitely. I definitely want to check this out. This oh, is fantastic! Yeah, it, it was. It was. It was awesome. It's only. It's like an hour. Or it's 109 minutes. So it's a little bit more than an hour and a half. <clears throat> Not quite a two-hour okay. movie. Um, it's predictable. It's a kids' cartoon, so it's kind of predictable in how it's gonna go. There is a little bit of a twist at the end that I didn't see coming. Um. But just overall, really enjoyable movie. And there's some lines in there that we're still floating around the house. Like, hmm. you know, pig, dog, pig, dog, pig, dog, loaf of bread. Ah! <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I, I, I recommend. It's, uh, it's Netflix. Is it Netflix? Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I recommend anybody watch it because... Wow. I mean, yeah, it's a it's a family movie, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, yeah, it's it's really good. Uh, uh, yeah. Netflix is where you can find that. Yeah, Netflix. Oh, whatever. Netflix, Amazon Prime, like the money just doesn't exist. So yeah, like pretty much everyone has both of those. Like I would say that that that's probably the biggest crossover. Uh, well, I would say everyone in our circles. Let's not be. Well, sure, sure, inclusive. sure. I mean, if you're a if you're a cord cutter, like those are the two that you probably got. If you've only got two, I see. You says it's by the Spider Verse people. That does not surprise me. Ah, because what I've seen of the Spider Verse oh, cool. was pretty fucking amazing. Oh, you need to you need to watch that whole thing. That's that's really really good. Yeah. All right. Um, my favorite thing that I've watched during the pandemic, 
Uh, I almost feel like I'm cheating because this is kind of new. It just wrapped up like a week or two ago. Mm-hmm. Invincible on Amazon Prime. It is an animated series. It's eight episodes long. Okay. It is. It's fucking amazing. It. Okay, so it's superheroes. It's very adult. And holy fuck, does it go places. I don't want to give anything else away because I don't want to spoil anything. Um, the, the closest thing I can, I can mention that kind of feels like it, kind of has a little bit of, um, man, this is similar to this, would be The Boys. Oh, I, okay. I, did you watch The Boys? I did not, but I am slowly reading the comic book series. Ah, okay, okay. Um, it's got some of that vibe to it. And but before anyone asks, nothing. yes, I got I acquired the comic books legitimately. It was a humble bundle, and I bought the PDFs. Nice. <laughs> um, yeah, but I mean, it, Invincible. Uh, yeah, man, we're gonna have to do like a spoiler episode or something about Invincible after you watch it because I want very much to talk about it, but I also very much do not want to spoil a fucking moment of that for anybody. Gotcha. Because it is a fucking delight. Gotcha. It's so good. And it's only eight episodes. I think I make that happen. Yep, and they're they're like forty nine minutes a piece or something like that. I. So, so you're in it for like six and a half hours. I recently watched uh, several episodes of um, Designated Survivor because I'm trying to catch up to oh, Amber. Okay. It's a pretty oh, good okay. show. Uh, lo- uh, it's it's kind of I mean you know I don't know if you know about it but it's 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 basically Jack Bauer becomes president. Yeah. Um, that's yep. Yeah, that's what I saw. He. Like they they kill off like basically whoever the terrorists are they kill basically the entire government and then this yep. guy, uh, the secretary of the HUD, the HUD secretary is the yeah, designated yeah, yeah. survivor, a real position, uh, for the for the State of the Union and he becomes president. It's fri- There's a little bit of political intrigue. There's mm-hmm. some terroristy stuff. There's I mean it's got kind of all the things. It's really good. I, I'm really enjoying it, but I keep. I keep like every time I think there's something new, I like oh my gosh, I finally caught up to where you, where I was the first time I watched it. Maybe I'll catch up to Amber soon. Oh no, I remember this. So oh, I'm a season and a half season season and a half in, and I think I'm just now like legit looking at my Netflix watch history. I'm just now hitting the new stuff, and that is okay. either really good or really bad. Either either it's bad because it was forgettable, or it's really good because I didn't catch enough of it the first time. I'm catching it the second time. Either way, um, it's a good show. <clears throat> All right, my. My no shit best thing that I've seen during the pandemic is Lovecraft Country. Okay. This show. The way it addresses the racial bias of the 50s as in your face, the fact that there is some supernatural things going on and they don't try to dumb it down to the lowest common denominator and make it so everybody understands it. Uh, the way they they basically riff off not the not the source material of Lovecraft, but the ideas and the f- fantasticism and the the themes instead of retelling a, an old story, they incorporate like the mm. the, the 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 ethos into the storyline. Um, the end of season one. There's only one season. It's ten episodes long. I think it's on HBO. Uh, the end of the first season surprised me. The whole thing is a cliffhanger. And the stories they tell and the way that they tell them are masterful. It is HBO at its best. It's this, such uh, a good fucking series. One one season? It's uh, One season is out right now? One season is out right now. There is not that I know of any confirmations or denials of a second season. Okay. Um, a second season would be problematic for storyline elements and which actors and things like that, blah, 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 blah. But that could easily be routed around, especially with the things that they've already established. Um, but it's, it touches on everything, but doesn't dive too deep in any of it. And it doesn't throw anything like in your face, just giving you an answer because we we think you're too stupid to understand. 
you know, like right. mm-hmm. even after watching the whole thing, I still have so many questions about shit that I should probably understand. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's masterful. It's, it, it's, I, I highly recommend this as well. It is just so good. It is yeah, 10 it's episodes. Really good. It, it's, it's challenging, but, but, uh, but very good is what you're saying. Yeah. It's, it's cerebral enough that I really enjoyed it. And I constantly wondered what was next and where they were going to go with it. But also, uh, uh, easy enough to watch that my sister in law, who does not like cerebral viewing at all, uh, felt like she kept up and understood. So oh, nice. yeah, it's, it's it, it strikes yeah. that fine balance. Um, but mostly, especially as it as I was watching it during the summertime, you know, late summertime after the George Floyd incident and uh, all that stuff. The way they handle race relations, race relations in that movie, is having not been there, and only understanding what I've read, the stories that I've been told and talked to, uh, the people that I've talked to, and things like that. It's as close to accurate as you would find in a fantasy show. Ah, uh, yeah, and that's important. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's not a documentary. It th- it doesn't try to be right. a documentary, but it does present things in it doesn't it doesn't uh glorify yeah, anything normally, yeah it's not something you would normally see portrayed in a in a fantasy series right but it's like yeah. a it's a main line through the story and it's mm. fucking fantastic it's just it's just so good okay good recommendations i'm gonna check out both of the things that you see <clears throat> i will probably check out invincible i don't know if black sales will catch my eye until i really really need some more uh some more lovecraft and once I do, I'll switch over and see if that'll ease it up a little bit. Yeah, there's a, I think there's three seasons, three or four seasons of Black Sails, and it's mm. like ten episode seasons. So like, there's a lot of content there. So it's kind of a commitment if you're going to jump into that. Invincible's uh, quick. You can get, you can knock that out in the weekend. Yeah, like that's yeah. that's that's where I'm at. Um, yeah, dude. Hey, uh, let's do this. One city. One city. One forecast. One forecast. One word. It's Ritual Misery's One Word Weather. Brought to you by Mark Jelinek and his What Is It About the Weather podcast. Here at WRMP, we're committed to bringing you the latest weather forecasts from around the world. Let's check out today's weather in Rome, Italy. Cloudy. One city. One city. One forecast. One forecast. One word. There we go. All right. Um, excellent. So glad we're doing that segment. I love it. I love it. It's so <laughs> dorky and just great. Um, next week, man, I, I want to talk about wearable tech. Mm. You are an Apple Watch guy. I am. I am not a watch guy, period. I'm, I used to be. I'm not a watch guy at all. I hate wearing watches. I hate wearing anything. <laughs> but okay. I'm still an Apple Watch guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I'm I'm real interested in your in your take on on some things. I've got some ideas about uh, things that are coming down the pipe. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that you've you've got opinions about the current state of things with wearable tech, and probably got some ideas about about the future, what we got coming, what's good, what's bad, um, things that you would like to see that aren't necessarily like on anyone's anyone's slate for like 2022 2023 or whatever um but like a wish list almost um i kind of want to look at it as um uh like like a wish list slash predictions um okay but i also want to talk about it from a security standpoint because uh my my job uh part of my job deals with keeping certain types of technology out of certain buildings (laughs) and uh, wearable tech is becoming more and more a thorn in my fucking side. Yeah. So I just kind of kind of explore like all things wearable tech. That sounds awesome. I can do that. I can I can get behind that. I just sent Kent a picture of my Echo Show Five, the one that's been acting up this entire <laughs> episode. Uh, yeah. It's fucking updating. <laughs> Lending it's credence, amazing. yeah, lending, lending credence to my my idea that before the show, it was stuck in an update, and that's why I didn't want to do anything, so I had to reboot it, and here it is an, an hour later, and it's it's updating itself. 
Uh, yeah, and that I think that was a pre-show thing where uh, where we, we were first having issues with that. Yeah, or you were. Anyway. Yeah. I was I was kind of laughing to myself. Pa- patrons will get that whole conversation by going, and you can become a patron by going to patreon.com slash ritual misery. God, why is this so hard? Patreon.com slash ritual misery. <laughs> uh, yeah, or just go to ritual misery.com to see everything that we've got going on. Yep, socials, all this stuff. Hell yeah, um, dude, it's been uh, it's been a good show. It's been a really good show. It's like been it. one show, but I, I can't go from there. Yeah, I know. I don't know what comes next. <laughs> um, yeah, no, this was this was a blast, dude, and um, uh, I'm really looking forward to talking to everyone next week. Well. <laughs> We are we are live every Sunday at some time, as of yet undetermined. I'll tweet it out when necessary at twitch.tv slash ritual misery. Thank you for listening. For Kent, for me, for you, and for everyone else, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. See ya. Still waiting for that, that video. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> R-I-T-U-A-L-M-I-S-E-L-Y. Damn, I got lost right there at the end. I, I think I got thrown off by the by the picture you texted me or something. Because I was like, mm, I don't know what comes next. I'm just gonna add lib. <laughs> it was just like, well, that was dumb. <laughs> that was awesome.